Hello Legacy Savers. So we're going to take a look at section 5.4 which is on point slow form. So the materials you're going to want to want, some notes, that foldable that we made in class we used last time, a pen or a pencil, and you probably will want a calculator today. So this video is going to focus on how to write linear equations using point slope form. So some vocab that you're going to want to have. Point slope form of an equation. What this looks like is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. <clears throat> m is your slope, just like last time, and x1 and y1 is an ordered pair that's on that line. So it can be any ordered pair that they are giving you. So let's actually take a look at your foldable. So if you remember, we wrote those things on the outside of your foldable last time. Now we're not going to use the first foldable or first one today, just because we're never going to be given slope or we're never going to be given the y-intercept for these problems. So go ahead and open the second flap and you'll see that you have used point slope form, then what you're going to do if you have a slope and a point. So you're going to take the slope and substitute it for m and then take the x and y values from our order pair and put them in for x1 and y1. What you're going to want to do is get it y equals. So basically what this means, get it into slope intercept form in all actuality. That's what we want to do. Because we like slope intercept form. It's a lot easier to deal with. So you know how we have some stuff on the left hand side? Well on the right hand side now we are going to solve it using our new steps. <clears throat> so I'm going to use point slope form. So I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So my m or aka my slope is negative 3. So I'm going to plug in for my m that negative 3 that they gave me. Alright, now they gave me a point 3 negative 1. So this is my x and this is my y. So in my x1 and y1 I'm going to plug in these values. So x1 is going to be 3 and y1 is going to be negative 1. So I have y minus a negative 1 because y1 is negative 1. x minus x is 3. There you go. So now what I want to do is solve for y. So over here I have y minus a negative 1. Well when you subtract a negative, you actually are technically adding it. So I'm going to put that as y plus 1. Over here, we're going to distribute. So I have negative 3 times x. So I have negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. I'm still not solved for y though. I need to get y alone. So I'm going to subtract 1, right? And I get y equals negative 3x plus 9 minus 1 plus 8. <clears throat> now if you notice your work over here you should have gotten also for an answer because it's the same problem. So this can be done either way. This problem can be done on either of these examples. It Pick the side that works best for you and you can perform that way on the quizzes and tests. I'm not going to require you to use one form over the other. It is a personal preference of your choice. Now let's open the third flap. So we followed this area last time. So we're going to go and use this part. So I want to Uh, to do my point slope form, you're first going to find your slope because I didn't give any, I wasn't given my slope. I was just given the 
I was just given two points. So I'm going to find my slope using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Not too bad, right? And then you're going to use point slope form. Now, this should look strangely familiar from second flap. <clears throat> this is actually the second flap right after that. So you're going to use point slope form, and you're going to substitute the given slope that you just found right here for m. Then substitute the x and y values from the ordered pair for x1 and y1. Solve for y. So it's going to basically feel like the exact same thing, except you're going to have one more step. So let's take a look at this one. On the left hand side, we worked it out last video. So let's take a look at this right hand side. So I need to find my slope. So my slope, if you remember, is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to say this guy's x1 and y1 because he's the first point, And this is x, and that's y. This is x2 and y2. So my y2 is negative 7 minus my y1, which is negative 1. So I'm going to subtract 1. Now I have x2, which is 6, and I'm going to subtract x1, which is 4. So I have negative 7 minus a negative 1. So that's technically negative 7 plus 1. When I have double negative, I get a plus. So negative 7 plus 1 is going to give me a negative 6. <clears throat> and I have 6 minus 4, which is 2. Now, negative 6 over 2, that is a negative 3. Now, if you remember, that's what we got over here. We got a negative 3 for slope. So that means we are on the right track. Now I'm going to use point slope form. So y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So my slope, or m, is negative 3. There we go. Now, I can pick either one of those points. But since I designated this as x1 and y1, why not just use those points? So my y1 is going to be negative 1, <clears throat> and my x1 is going to be 4. So I want to pop those into my equation here. There we go. So I have y plus 1, because remember, double negative, give you plus. And negative 3, distribute here, negative 3x plus 12. I need y alone, because remember, the last step on the left-hand side says solve for y. So I'm going to solve for y. Subtract one of both sides. And that is the answer that we got over here, right? 3x plus 11. So just like last time, you can pick whichever side works best for you. If you like y equals mx plus b and just plugging into that, that works. If you like point slope form, then by all means, use him too. It all depends on what you want to use. Either way, you will get the exact same answer. That's the end of the video. See you later, Sabres.